Hi, I'm Patu from Free Fin Cal. Today I want to talk about the Franklin Front Closure episode uh, in two parts. This is the talk I gave to the Tamil Nadu Investor Association yesterday. So I want to do it in two parts. Uh, I can't give it in one shot since I, uh, 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 since my mouth gets tired. Um, people find that uh, very weird when I say my mouth gets tired, but that's how my life is. So I'm going to uh, close this uh, uh, this uh, screen uh, that is the um, webcam so that I, you can focus on the slides because you, the, uh, my image would cut the slides. So I'm just going to close that out so you can now have the look at the full slides. So we're going to do this in two parts. And in the first part, I'm going to talk about who is to blame. And uh, I have already talked about what's happened. Uh, I will just uh, give you a brief recap because that's on the slide. So I had, uh, when I gave the talk for the TNIA, I had not talked about the uh, AMC. I had not basically named the AMC uh, because that, 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 I mean, those were their rules and I adhered to them, but now I don't have that problem. I can talk about the AMC. I'll be using a Q&A format and uh, my opinions will be based on fact as much as possible. And as always, investors are expected to exercise their own independent due diligence. Now, everybody understands what a fixed deposit is, even for a person who has very little knowledge or no knowledge of personal finance. Uh, if you ask them what is a fixed deposit, they will tell you how it works because they may not tell you about its taxation, other things, uh, uh, TDS rules and so on, but they will tell you how the uh, how the basic FD works. But if you take that FD and you start trading it to somebody else in the middle of the term, then it becomes 100 times more complicated. And if you put that FD into a mutual fund and uh, by that mutual fund it becomes thousand times more complicated and uh, it becomes even more difficult if that fixed deposit is not actually listed on an exchange and you have uh, uh, had some kind of you know um, personal agreement with the bond issuer so that's uh, that's what we will talk about uh, what led to the problem so that's a little ironical and even more ironical is if if my uh, uh, interest repaying capacity is lower uh, is actually low or lower whatever you want to call it then um, my rating would be less than AAA or A1 plus which is the highest rating and uh, and I will be expected to pay more interest which is amusing already my ability to pay interest is low but I am supposed to pay more interest so that is the whole uh, way in which credit risk works and if I am not able to pay then it would be called as a credit event. Um, uh, and that's when the NAV would fall vertically, as you have seen, uh, you, you must have seen in the Vodafone case, you must have seen in the S-Bank case, you must have, earlier we saw Jindal Steel, Amtec Auto, DHFL, Reliance Communications, uh, we just saw HSBC mutual fund has downgraded, I forgot what uh, what is the bond. So it just keeps happening, almost it has become a, a monthly event since the last 2-3 years and I have been saying for a long time that the uh, stock market crash had started already started in the bond market a um, uh, couple of years ago that is the recession had already started and now this lockdown has uh, completely uh, uh, you know, put the economy to a gr uh, grinding halt now we must understand just like uh, all the st uh, large cap stocks uh, be uh, begin as small cap stocks at some point begin as IPOs at some point it is very vital to lend to low rated bonds uh, to smaller companies only then the they will also have a chance to grow i mean we can't uh, be uh, very partial to who we lend then the then the economy will fall apart so it's very important to be part of a person part of the uh, system sorry uh, part of the system that lends to low rated bonds and there's nothing wrong about it so what happened? So on April 23rd, six Franklin uh, Templeton debt mutual funds were forcibly closed. This was the first time ever it happened in India. The reason given was excessive redemptions. The total AUM of those six schemes is 25,800 crores and more, a little bit more than that. And many people are saying, oh, Franklin is an international company. It can actually uh, take this uh, AUM on their books and convert it into cash and pay unit holders immediately and so on. Please don't think about all that. That's just not going to happen. Please go and study the Frankel, Franklin Templeton financials that there in their website. In September 2019, the profit after tax was just 400 crores. This is 1.5% of this total AUM. And uh, already 
um, I think from uh, previous year to uh, September 2018 to September 2019, the AUM had already, f the, sorry, the profit after tax had already fallen down by more than 100 crores. So I don't think uh, there's very, uh, there's any chance of them writing uh, this off. Of course, yes, you are right that uh, their reputation is lost. People will not invest in them, in their funds anymore. Distributors will find it very difficult to recommend their funds and so on. Uh, but uh, writing or right, taking this on their books also is going to uh, essentially uh, be very difficult for them. I don't think that's going to happen. There'll be too many, too much of uh, paperwork, too many hurdles. The, the their boards, the international board members, they also are, they will have some issues against it and so on. So I don't think that's going to happen. So the closure requires approval of the trustees, which has now been given. It requires approval of the unit holders, which ha I don't know why it's taking so long. It has to be sought. Um, it also requires SEBI approval. SEBI got really pissed off uh, when the when the uh, one of the top guys of Franklin uh, basically blamed uh, the SEBI rule of unlisted uh, exposure to be limited to 10% and basically said, uh, basically told Franklin to shut up and uh, uh, focus on giving back the money as soon as possible. So the SEBI approval is basically there in one way or the other. I think uh, the SEBI should tell Franklin, look, don't bother wasting time giving uh, asking unit holders uh, and uh, waste time, just get on with it. So an external body has been, uh, uh, advisory body has been approved by, has been appointed by Franklin to take care of this, uh, you know, liquidation and so on. It would take anywhere between a few months to a few years, depending on the funds, to uh, give the money back to the remaining unit holders. So why did this happen? This was triggered by a fear, uh, by collective fear and uh, not an actual credit event. None of the bonds in the portfolio are actually uh, defaulted. Institute, your, your guess is that institutional investors uh, holding the portfolio found the portfolio uh, uh, suddenly too risky after the lockdown and the COVID uh, development and they uh, lack uh, and they had, a, I mean, they, they uh, basically said, I don't, uh, I think this is too risky for me to hold, let me get out of here. And so it's a collective lack of faith in the, in the funds portfolio and there was mass redemptions. Franklin tried borrowing money, but that was not enough to handle the redemptions and there was what is known as a fire sale. A fire sale is what happens when uh, the value of your, uh, of your bond starts falling every time there is a purchase made. That is, people want to keep selling, keep selling, keep selling. There are no buyers, only sellers, then the value keeps dropping and you must have seen that in the climax of the movie, Margin Call. So the AMC was forced to sell the assets. They either they could not sell it or they could not sell it at market price. That's called liquidity risk because the buyer would say, uh, you are selling uh, in desperation. So I will set the price. It will be lower than market price. So uh, the, the, the sad part of it is that this is not the first time that's happening in India. The, the, for every stock market crisis, the bond market gets affected too. People start loving cash and they exit uh, for mutual funds in the bond market as well. In October 2008, there was a uh, problem in the debt segment, debt, uh, identical problem, people started exiting and uh, in those days, FMPs had an exit load. Uh, in uh, 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 Today, if you hold a fixed maturity plan, you can only sell it midterm uh, in the stock exchange. But in those days, you could exit and sell the FMP to back to the AMC for an exit load. And uh, even F FMCs faced redemption pressure, liquid funds faced redemption pressure, ultra short term, uh, short term funds faced redemption pressure. That is when you must have seen the tweet by uh, P. Chidambaram saying in those days I had given a line of credit and that, that was hap that hap that line of credit was, ha was given only to handle these redemptions. So it is very important for us to recognize 2020 is basically a repeat of 2008. It's happening in different extents in other funds. In Franklin, uh, I will talk about why it happened more because of the portfolio, you must know it by now. So this is not a black swan event. Uh, as uh, Taleb says in his book, it's probably a black swan uh, 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 swan event for the unit holders, but it is certainly not a black swan event for the industry. It is certainly not a black swan event for SEBI and certainly not for Franklin, which is the oldest private AMC. So one question, why did it happen to only Franklin? Well, I think it's, uh, we can only say it has happened to one AMC so far. The bond market is typically illiquid. Most of the trading happens in the bond market in guilds only, government bonds only. It is hard to sell even listed 
double A or A rated securities, uh, suppose a triple A security becomes double A, it is very difficult to sell large quantities of double A or A rated securities for even listed bonds that is uh, in the stock exchange. Now Franklin held uh, quite a bit of unlisted bonds, I am not able to find out the exact exposure, I will try and do that. They had excessive unlisted bond exposure that is these were uh, private dealings made with uh, the bond issuer and only one uh, AMC would be holding those bonds and uh, nobody else and this will not be listed on the exchange. Uh, what is known as the over the top counter uh, dealings. There is nothing illegal about these dealings but that is what Franklin did and big investors feared that uh, such uh, bonds uh, may not be uh, uh, may not be uh, worthy until maturity there could be defaults and they also realized that if there are redemptions and uh, Franklin will have trouble selling them and therefore they press the exit button and uh, just like Jeremy Irons would say in margin call. Uh, uh, it's better to be the first out of the door and then it's not called panicking. So that's kind of what has happened. It is irresponsible behavior arguably but that's essentially what has happened. So like I said the redemptions became so big that even the borrowing uh, by the AMC continuous borrowing was not enough. They, uh, we will talk about that now about what's uh, pros and cons about it. Okay. All right. So, um, who is to blame? Now there are two two arguments to it. Uh, to this, we you can uh, we can blame the AMC saying the AMC was playing with fire. Um, they 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 forgot what happened in 2008. They should have understood the danger with unlisted securities uh, when there is a stock market kind of uh, stock market crash kind of situation, and uh, therefore they are to blame. The other argument is that look whatever happens. Uh, 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 in a when people started start start fearing even listed bonds will have uh, for debt, debt funds with listed bonds will have problems uh, in 2008 that happened with listed bonds so uh, or uh, uh, so I, I mean there's no there's no way you can uh, prepare for this or plan for this and uh, uh, credit uh, investing in credit risk is a valid uh, segment uh, in the investing space. And the other argument is you can say the big investors who enjoyed good returns from a fund management which had uh, you know uh, pioneered and spearheaded the uh, investment in this space and they have done an excellent job out of it. They uh, uh, they betrayed the AMC and ran at the possibility of big trouble. So that is one argument that can be given. Whatever the argument um, as, uh, retail, uh, as usual the retail investors are left holding the uh, again as Jeremy Ayan says the biggest ba bag of odorous e excrement in margin call and uh, as uh, Steve Carroll says in the big shot it is always the retail investors who suffer and uh, uh, that is what has again happened. Uh, as an uh, interesting development to this in October 2019 SEBI wanted unlisted bonds in a mutual fund portfolio to be less than or equal to 10 percent and they had given a deadline that they, they, had, they realized that unlisted bonds could not be freely sold and they had given a they had given an option for AMCs to hold them until maturity but they had given a deadline uh, for June 2020 and had subsequently revised it to uh, December to, uh, 2020. But uh, there is one argument that the Franklin had enough opportunity to at least partially reduce the unlisted exposure and this is the argument that SEBI had said in, in its letter two days ago to Franklin saying uh, uh, shut up and uh, get back uh, focus on giving the money. Um, so the, uh, the other argument is Franklin had these long term bonds which were unlisted and they had to wait for the maturity. Um, if you actually think about it if the if COVID had not happened the closed funds would have actually become less risky. So it's a so we are actually we are now uh, it is very important to recognize this there is a lot of hindsight in uh, in our criticism. If COVID had not happened those funds would have naturally become less risky but uh, uh, COVID, COVID has happened and now we, uh, we are blaming the AMC for their bad choices and so on. So please recognize hindsight bias is there and uh, we can't uh, act like experts in hindsight. Anybody can act like an expert in hindsight for that matter. So is this a credit risk problem or a liquidity risk problem? Well, uh, I would say it is a, um, it is a, uh, it is a, um, it's a slightly nuanced, it has got both aspects to it. 
I would say it's mass redemption caused by a sudden change in the credit risk perception of the portfolio resulting in a fire sale. Uh, I have been reading about mass redemption, academic work on it and so on. But, uh, while I was do, uh, looking at it, I found this June 16th, 1991 short note in the Los Angeles Times. It says mass redemption is a mutual fund risks and explains why it is a mutual fund risk. You can actually look at it. You can Google it and have a look. It's a very short note. You can see. Now, uh, many people are crying fraud, conspiracy, conflict of interest, this and that and so on. But I want to make it very clear as per currently available information, no rules or no regulations of SEBI was broken by Franklin. And uh, you can always say mistakes were made, big mistakes were made, colossal mistakes were made, but all that we are saying in hindsight. But mis a mistake does not mean there is a fraud or conspiracy. So that's very important to uh, differentiate the two. Finally, um, a summary, there, there is a good and the bad and the ugly in all this. The good is we, we must not forget that the fund management has done an exceptional job in handling an extremely risky space. But then a uh, uh, crisis, a stock market crash like this uh, and, 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 uh, and the lockdown uh, has uh, basically uh, put a spoke in the wheel. And uh, you can argue that is wrong or right or it cannot be avoided, but that's how it is. And please recognize the fund management never suffered an exclusive credit default. They had all these bespoke arrangements, that is custom made arrangements with bond issuers. They were the only one buying from the bond issuer. None of those bonds defaulted. They had uh, defaulted bonds in the portfolio, but then other AMCs were also investing in Jindal Steel, Amtak Auto, Yes Bank, Vodafone, etc. So other AMCs were also handling it. Whatever they were doing exclusively, none of them have so far as on date not defaulted as far as I know. And that is an excellent record. Even though uh, we are blaming Franklin and all that, criticizing them, we must still give them the, that much credit. The bad is that the practical essence of 2008 was ignored. Uh, can we plan for this? My my feeling is I'm not particularly sure that uh, we can plan for this. I don't think. Uh, see, if there is one bond that failed, then I can I can have a, a hedging. I can do a hedging against the credit risk for a few bonds in the portfolio. But I cannot hedge a portfolio against mass redemptions as far as I know. So again, the bad is when there is a precedence, it's not a black swan. We can't say it's an unexpected event. We can't say it's a force majeure or unforeseeable event. Uh, I think uh, there are enough wordings in the scheme document that makes it very clear that uh, uh, that such, such a possibility has been foreseen. So it is not exactly a black swan. The ugly, well, uh, you can say, I mean, especially if you're an affected investor, you will have a lot of things to say, uh, a lot of unsavory stuff to say about Franklin. Um, but clearly Franklin, I have already talked about it, how Franklin messed up. Uh, Franklin should not have sent an all is well letter just days before the fund was closed and they are still uh, putting on a brave face in the media and saying everything is fine, we will pay, uh, there is no solvency issue, this and that. I think they should go out and say to retail investors, look, for whatever reason, there is, a mess has happened. Okay, if you say we have messed up, we have messed up, the shit has hit the fan, we will clean up as best as we can. That much at least if they say there will be some kind of you know uh, credibility left for them. Uh, uh, see, uh, retail investors are actually very gullible people. If you, if you say sorry to them, they will quickly uh, accept your apology. And I think, uh, uh, I mean, they'll quickly pardon you and start investing again. That's how retail investors are. So, so that's what I wanted to say in this first part of the talk. I talk about other aspects of this crisis. How can it be prevented? How can we invest? Uh, in debt funds better in the second part and so on. So thank you uh, for uh, watching. Bye-bye.